And what's shaking, guys? Luke Dancy here, joined by the coffee-drinking Dan Sperry. How we doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Good afternoon, good morning, whatever, wherever people are watching. Good evening. I know it's the real Dan Sperry because you're drinking coffee. You are a uh, coffee fiend, as they say. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, right. that's right. And you have your own line of coffee as well, if people don't know that. You have your own... Why don't you plug that? Usually. Usually I do. Yeah, it's on a it's on a break along with a lot of things right now, uh, you know, uh, but it's it's called Zombie Java. And uh, hopefully, ho hopefully uh, with the uh, with with a lot of things in 2021, it will also be uh, coming back, you know. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, it's good to see you, man. I know we both live in Vegas, but we don't get to see each other much, even without the virus. Like we never, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You're always busy. So this is as close right. as we can get for now. And you got a kid and I, I don't like kids. So <laughs> bit of a bit of a deal breaker. Well, you know, you know, uh, we got a lot of great people watching today as well. I uh, see Oscar Munoz out there uh, watching. Oh, Oscar's Oscar. watching right on. I've known Oscar for uh, for forever. Uh, past president. Mr. Yes. Yeah. What's up, Oscar? Yeah. Good to see him. Uh, and we've got a lot of other people out there. I told you before, uh, also someone was saying that you are their favorite magician, Mr. Lazarus Benson. He's giving you some love out there from Wyoming. Oh, right on. Lazarus. Lazarus so, Benson. There you go. An interesting right. name. So uh, we're going to talk to you today about a lot of different things. We've got some uh, some video footage of you queued up. But why don't we kind of start back in the early days with Dan Spear. I know that you're not originally from Las Vegas. Um, you were not always a magician. So what got you into magic and what got you to las vegas that's you know that's a pretty big gap there yeah uh <clears throat> yeah long story i'll try not to make even longer but um i got into magic really uh what what uh what started it was seeing copperfield when i was really young i uh i didn't know who copperfield was you know um i might have been aware of his tv specials that he used to do his annual specials um but I, I didn't know because I was too young. I was probably five. You know, um, I, I was uh, maybe maybe five years old. And uh, and I didn't know, too, that that magic could be like in a theater. My only experience at that point had been, you know, probably seeing a magician either like at a library or at a school assembly or most likely a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I didn't know. And and I just kind of thought I I think I kind of thought clowns and magicians were the same thing, you know, because like they like, when you're so young you kind of and probably you know <clears throat> again like at a birthday party or or or, or an event or something uh, saw a clown you know twisting balloons and doing like you know sponge bunnies or something or or a or a or a dove pan or whatever you know so that's what I really kind of I knew I I I I was cool with magic you know, or whatever, like I knew I, I enjoyed it, um, but I didn't, I didn't love it, you know, uh, it wasn't what I was into. I was more into like GI Joes and, you know, video games and stuff like that, you know, like any, you know, Hot Wheels cars and stuff. Um, but, but it was when my grandparents took me to see Copperfield, I, I didn't really know how big of a deal that was, you know, cause again, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know what I was going to see. And so being in a theater was really like overwhelming. I think that was even my first time in a theater, you know. Uh, and this is, you know, this is in the 90s when it's, you know, he's playing 2,500, 3,000 seat performing art centers, selling them out multiple shows in a day. Uh, usually he was he would be there. I, I don't know how, how it was when uh, uh, he toured uh, back east. Uh, you're from uh, South Carolina, right? I am from... North Carolina. I'm from that's, the north. Yeah, that's what I said. So, like, from you know, being in North Carolina, I don't know how long uh, how long he stayed when he came through, but he would usually stay like a weekend when he came through Minnesota, which is where I'm originally from, and uh, and so so like there was just a buzz. I didn't know like what this was gonna be, and you know, he comes out and he you know this is back when he would open with the death saw. He does the death saw, and uh, and the blade comes down, and I freak out because I don't know that that this is what magic is like remember so like or that or this is what an illusionist is i didn't even know that illusionist was a term so <clears throat> seeing this i truly thought something went wrong i thought he died and i freaked out we had to leave the the venue we had to leave the theater go out in the lobby and i'm you know crying and 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 having a breakdown and a, and a whole episode you know and uh, and and all of this, and we had to leave. I never saw him get put back together. We never saw the rest of the show. Like it, it, it had such a, a jarring, and 
and uh, and an effect on me like that to where to where we had to leave. And I never saw him get put back together. So still thought, you know, this guy died. And as a way of like um, <laughs> sort of, uh, it, 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 I always kind of called it like home therapy or whatever. Was given like you know the old uh, type you know Marsha Rodine magic kits from the toy store you know or the fun ink you know type magic kits and stuff, and uh, you know like the like the ball base and the you know plastic you know whoop a doop a doop thing and uh, or a little plastic drawer box or you know all those you know paddle you know thing all those basic things so that's what really kind of introduced me right <clears throat> to uh, to that there's sort of this cool trick or secret behind what was going on, you know, and, uh, and then from there, you know, books from the library and, uh, and things like that. So all, all that together is what started this curiosity and this, this, uh, whatever drive to want to learn more, you know, uh, about it. And, and it wasn't even like, I don't even remember a time where I showed like, you know, sometimes guys have stories where they're like, it wasn't until I was able to show my grandfather the ambitious card. And oh, yeah. that was, you know, and, and, and his dentures fell out and he got his first boner in 20 years. And that was when I knew it, I was going to be a magician. You know, it, I never had anything like that. I didn't do the school talent show and get carried around on their shoulders, like Rudy, you know, or something. <laughs> and, uh, and, and all that, it just kind of, it just kind of unfolded. Right. And, uh, and then just started doing shows and things like that. And I also, I also didn't, uh, I also didn't show anybody. I didn't show my friends like growing up. I don't know about you or, or anybody else. Like I really kept, um, cause I didn't have, so where I was from in Minnesota, there wasn't really magic anywhere near where I was, you know, from it, it, you had to go like two hours into the twin cities, uh, or like another four hours to like Rochester or another two hours, you know, uh, hour and a half or whatever to Duluth, you know, there were magic clubs, you know, there were like, you know, little, little magic, you know, hubs, you know, around the state, but I, I didn't have uh, a club or, or, or any friends growing up anywhere near me that, that were into magic. And this is also pre-internet and, and, and internet was also like in such an infant state, obviously Facebook didn't exist, yeah. you know, trying to find a, a Yahoo chat group that was for magicians most likely you weren't talking to magicians you know it was like bob markwood <laughs> under another you know username or something oh, again God. as usual you know or some you know some some weirdo you know in there and all that so like you know uh so i didn't really have a lot of so i didn't show anybody so it was really internalized i really only uh would would write letters even not even not even email i didn't i wasn't even allowed to have my own email address yet so i had to write letters you know, and like as I was growing to to different magicians and uh, and places to try to, uh, you know, ask questions or be like, oh, you know, uh, can, can I send you a videotape of, of this routine that I'm putting together, which, you know, it looked, you know, looking back, you know, it, it probably took me two weeks to, to put together. Uh, my version of uh, aces in their faces, you know, the most self-working grandfather's aces <laughs> ever. But, you know, it took me a minute to learn that, you know, Elmsley count. What the hell's an Elmsley count? You know, <laughs> I'm 10, you know. And so, like, having to, like, press all that. So that, you know, grew and developed. And, and then as I got older, you know, shows came and I got into, like, the Dove Act and stuff. And from the Dove Act, as that started to grow, I had uh, – you know, I had done some competitions and then started getting hired by magic conventions to, to do it. And, um, uh, whoa, this is old. Look at that one. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> but, um, uh, man, yeah. And I was never into Wasteland Weekend. Like, looking at some of the, Jesus, looking at some of the, the, the looks that I've gone through. I was never into Wasteland Weekend, but for the majority, well, I sure look like I should be. Speaking of old, weekend. Dan, I'm going to pause the video for a second. Uh, pardon me for interrupting you, but no, no, it's Oscar fine. Munoz just sent me something that I'm now going to share here that you may or may not remember. Bam. Who was that? Yes. All right. So, yeah. So here's here's how <laughs> I got into. This is going to be a perfect transition. This is how I got into World's Greatest, actually. Um. <laughs> How, well, how I got to Vegas, actually. So 
um, I had so I developed this dub act, and I've done it, you know, at some conventions and won some competitions with it. But uh, Dale Heineman hired me to come to work the Magic Castle, right uh, after seeing me at Magi Fest one year, and uh, and so I I went and worked the castle. I was seventeen, like too young, <clears throat> you know, to be going there. But he, you know, he hooked me up. And uh, I, my first week at the castle, uh, I did the palace with Matt Marcy and Goldfinger and Dub. So what a, what a, what a cool, you know, group to have as, you know, my intro, duction to working the castle and being around, you know, it, the, those, those two, you know, uh, both of them were, were really great. Uh, so, anyways, uh, it was from the videotape of the castle that got me on my first Murray Hatfield tour two years later when I was 19. And this is when I was 19. Oscar was on that tour, which was great, again, because I'd known Oscar um, from before, because uh, we had known each other for years back uh, being in, in IBM and stuff mm -hmm. and uh, and being competitors. He actually judged Oscar in the uh, IBM close-up contest where he won the, the gold cups. Nice. So I'd known him for, for forever. And, um, and so there was, for whatever reason, Hatfield had this this uh this this hang up where he didn't like me wearing the makeup and keep in mind you know at like 19 or 20 when 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 I was doing this with Hatfield when we were on tour with Hatfield um my makeup wasn't as evolved it was still pretty in a, in an infant stage i guess you could say i mean it, it was colorful and it was you know it was getting pretty far out and i had my hair in those liberty spikes you know still but he was like uh you know he had said something like uh for one of the shows on the tour uh, I'll hire you, but for one show, you can't wear makeup, you know, and, and he was really on me about not wearing makeup. <laughs> and he was like, you don't need to wear makeup. It's, and I'm not saying this to like shit on Murray. I think he was, you know, obviously trying to, you know, trying to make a, a positive influence on me, like him and John Calvert. And like uh, they uh, uh, he had he had said, like, you know, one show, no makeup. You're going to you're going to hear a huge difference in the audience reaction. Trust me. And I was like, all right. So. If I'm not going to, you know, if I'm not going to wear makeup, I'm going to, you know, kind of grow my hair out slowly on the tour a bit because I, you know, sh I used to shave the sides still and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I let my hair kind of grow out. Um, I kind of like quit shaving a bit, you know, and uh, <laughs> and kind of like etched on these eyebrows and like kind of filled in with like a, a, a like a mascara brush, my my stubble <laughs> garbage, you know, and uh, and this is what I decided to look like just to kind of be like, well, if I don't have to wear makeup. I know, I'll try and look like some swashbuckler then or something, you know. And this is uh, this is what turned out. And uh, this was the one of the one of the few times where I've I've taken a gig on the on the basis of that uh, that I can't wear makeup. Oh. So that was uh, that was it. That was and at the time this was the first one. This was the first one. So that's why this is such a legendary photo. But uh, but anyway, so then from that video. Uh, from the Hatfield tour, which was a VHS tape, by the way, um, that uh, that I sent, that got me into the world's greatest because Joseph Gabriel was the Dove act here in Vegas in the world's greatest magic show, but they needed a, a swing act for him because when he would because the world's greatest ran seven days a week. Wow. We never had a day off. We did a show every night, seven days a week, and then when it came around various holiday times. Sometimes we'd be doing two shows a night, seven days a week, wow. <clears throat> um, because it wasn't union or anything, you know. So we they, they didn't care, and uh, and so um, so yeah, uh, so 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 you know, acts would need to take time off, right? And uh, they would take time off. Sometimes they'd go do other gigs, and so that's where I came in. Is I was basically Joseph's replacement. So when Joseph would take time off from the show, whether it be a couple weeks or a couple months, depending on the contracts that he was getting outside of the show, um, they'd have me come in, and and then uh, and and then I'd fill in for Joseph. And over time, this this is where it gets a little. This is where it, maybe it gets a little gnarly. But over time, uh, the producer said, uh, you know, hey, if you just lived out here, um, I would just put you in the show instead full time and move Joseph to Illusions. And uh, and I said, well, it's funny you said that because I was just looking at apartments out here yesterday and I'm moving here next month. I wasn't fucking looking at apartments and moving. I just <laughs> said this, you know, I just said this because like in that instant in my brain, uh, in my big boy brain, I, I said I, I realized like, all right, there's an offer happening right here. And 
I should take this, you know? So I just bullshitted my way throughout the whole thing, you know, like, yeah, I can start next month. My lease doesn't <laughs> nice. start till the first, you know? So, but I was like two days later, I was leaving back for Chicago because that's where I moved to <clears throat> when I, when I turned 18, uh, I moved out and, and moved to Chicago um, to seek my fortune. And, um, and so uh, I, I flew back to Chicago like two days later, put my notice in, uh, no, sorry, before that, like the next day I went and found an apartment, uh, found a roommate and, uh, and, and within a month, within oh, less than a month, moved to Las Vegas, went back to Chicago, sold whatever I didn't need, uh, quit booking shows, uh, you know, put, put, put my, uh, you know, my, my 30 days or whatever, put my notice into my apartment in Chicago and. And yeah, packed up everything I could and, and drove to Vegas and about halfway through the drive from from Chicago, because this was also in October. It was about it was about this time of year, actually. Hmm. And uh, and I remember being like, all right, from Chicago, I could either go across the Rockies, but that's probably going to be a little iffy because it could easily become a blizzard. Right. Oh, yeah. So I, I went the long way down, you know, through Missouri, around, you know, Texas and up. So it took longer, and halfway through that drive, my um, my what's it called? My cruise control went out. So I was like, so dangerous, like shoving shit under my knee to like push <laughs> down on the gas because my leg would get tired, you know. And uh, wow. and I'm like switching feet under, like I'm sitting like with one leg over the other as I'm driving to give my foot a break, like so fucking. Living the dream, like, Dan. Living the dream. Yeah, yeah. Listening to like listening to like Ken Scott kids show audiobooks as i'm driving like what a what you know like like what a dork you know i got the dubs and you know like my parrot with me and everything and we're just yeah cruising drinking coffee listening to book more kid shows with uh you know dave d and ken scott and all that you know shit used to pay 500 dollars. oh my for god a, yeah the, the whole set garbage. like the big remember the amr top it set it was like this giant vhs set yeah. like the whole thing yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually found my Carl Cloutier uh, top it pattern. Thank God, you know it's 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 behind this fake wall here, you know. Uh, but yeah, speaking of toppets and shit. And now you are in Vegas. How long have you been out here? Because I know you've been here before me, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So I I permanently moved in like 2006, I think. Okay, so about a year before me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause, cause, um, yeah, cause uh, Chris had already had Mind Freak based out here, mm -hmm. and, and had been running for a couple seasons before I moved out uh, here. You know, uh, so yeah, so I was out here for a couple years, and then, and then when World's Greatest closed, I just kind of bounced around on the strip, and then, uh, and then I didn't want to be the Dovac guy, you know, because that's all I was really getting hired for, and I wasn't able to develop new things or have a place to uh, showcase what I was developing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't want to just be stuck with just a bird act. <clears throat> and that's all I was known for. So I, I, I still was based here in Vegas, but I went out and started seeking out other, uh, you know, venues and opportunities and, and also working on learning how to talk on stage and developing sure. what, what my talking material would be like. And that was with a lot of help from from Kozak, who was the MC of World's Greatest and, 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 uh... and you know, eventually became one of my best friends and stuff and and he really helped me a lot uh over the years so that so that's when i kind of went went out back on the road started going on the road and then moved to manhattan for a couple of years to do my off-broadway show and stuff cool. and uh and then moved moved back to to pursue that triangle show and uh <laughs> and then did that for a couple of years triangle and then quit, yeah and then quit that company a few years ago and uh and and, and been back to being me and it's been it's been great that's the that's the story. Now we're all caught up. Hey, awesome! I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, you've done a lot of different things in a lot of different ways, uh, and it's. I went to see your your latest show here in Vegas before the pandemic. Uh, oh yeah, Black Magic Wednesday. Yeah, which is a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Yeah, with that. Yeah, you brought your fucking Turner watch. Oh God, <laughs> we won't even go there. <laughs> Just thought of that. It doesn't tell time ever. Ever. That's, that's yeah. the Turner watch. Um, one thing that happened out here that we had talked about loosely before we went live, um, was about something that happened to you and Oscar brought it up as well. So I thought I would go ahead and just knock this out. Uh, did you ever recover from those dudes that broke into your storage? If you guys don't know, there was a big thing that Dan went through and, uh, 
maybe just a quick little update. I know you've talked about this publicly before, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's really not a whole lot of updates there. There's one if you go on my YouTube, which is Dan Sperry official on YouTube. Um, I did I did make a video um, <clears throat> that I posted there that I did. A, I did a Facebook live about it, but not not uh, not not any new developments. They caught the guy mm -hmm. and uh, and the second person that did the actual break in. Uh, but uh, the dude was actually just a foot soldier for somebody else who we believe is working for somebody else so it, it became it actually unfolded into this whole mess like a movie um uh, they caught the guy he's not talking they haven't got any of uh the stuff that was uh, you know taken mm -hmm. and 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 probably never will um and uh and and yeah so it's kind of just like kind of sitting in limbo right now the the trial keeps getting pushed back and stuff and delayed um, but if anybody listening w had any part of either sharing, you know, any of the stuff that I that I posted about it or or helping with the GoFundMe, uh, there were there were so many people um, like I'm, I'm still thanking them when I run into them in person. But there was there was so uh, so many such like an, an onslaught, an overwhelming amount of people that that uh, I can't like it was impossible to keep up with. It was amazing. So if anybody had anything to do with helping uh, spread the word or, or, or if it was with a donation or anything, I am uh, eternally and, 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 and truly grateful and appreciative. And, and any other words similar to that, I can't even think of because it's outside my vocabulary most likely, mm -hmm. but thank you for um, helping with that, anybody watching. And, and if we ever encounter each other down the road, please come up and say hi and let me know that that it was you because at the very least i'd like to shake your hand and look you in the eye and say thank you so cool that's the deal um there were some other questions coming in you know we're going to jump around a little bit here uh someone wanted to know kind of the elephant in the room question <clears throat> which i know was going to come up at one point frankie valley says where did you get your style from so i was going to talk about character development and things like that but you know wow. where did this whole you know let's talk about that as a whole not just about you specifically but sure. character development as a magician not the easiest thing in the world what did you find work for you why don't we make it into that um i i well like the character development this is like a weird you know this is weird because i didn't you know some people choose a character yes. right like they they choose like i'm gonna be this guy i didn't really have like a like a, i'm gonna be this guy mm -hmm. sort of thing you know uh when i was younger and starting out again Getting back to what I said earlier, like being from Minnesota, you know, growing up there, despite what you see on the news, <laughs> Minnesota is actually a quite conservative, you know, state still. Once once you once you get about 45 minutes outside the Twin Cities, um, you know, you start seeing different sort of you, you start seeing a, an abrupt change in lawn signs. I'll just say that. <laughs> and uh, and so. Um, <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> don't tell you, this isn't this isn't a political thing. I'm just saying, despite what they say on the news, it's still a very you know conservative state. And so that with that, you know, I couldn't be 14, 15 years old, uh, being into you know uh, monster movies and 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 pro wrestling and and hanging out with friends that would be labeled as like, you know, the the punk rock kids, you know, in in school, mm -hmm. you know, if if we had to apply a a, a click you know, name to it, you know, you got the jocks and you got the nerds or you got the drama kids and then you got the, these ones, you know? So, uh, we were kind of like in that, you know, punk, you know, punk rock sort of click. If you had, like I said, if you had to give it one. So with that being said, I couldn't show up to be doing like birthday parties or a blue and gold banquet at 15, you know, asking for, you know, 75 bucks for, uh, you know, a, a, a half hour birthday show or something and looking like I looked, you know, so I actually had a completely separate persona that was uh, not not necessarily a character, but was an intentional uh, style uh, to perform as. But it wasn't it wasn't me, you know, and um, I'm reading some of these pop ups. A lot. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he, yeah, he was, he was not happy about that. But, uh, but we, 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 we buried that. We're cool now. Um, but so, so initially speaking, I had a completely different sort of, yeah, character, for lack of a better word. Okay. Um, but then as I got older, I wanted more of that to. Uh, oh, hold, hold on one second. 
Hey man, I'm doing uh, I'm doing an interview with Luke Dancy really quick. Can I call you back after? We'll let Dan take his quick. Call. Okay. All right. Thanks. Cool. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was that was Jake. Actually, we're, we're working on a we're 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 standing by for a for 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 a deal that might come through. All right. Uh, so fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed. Fing, fingers crossed. Legs crossed. Whatever. Eyes crossed. Uh, so anyway, so uh, so then as, as I got older, you know, um, <clears throat> it was actually I was uh, I was at Abbott's and uh, and I got booked to perform at Abbott's and and it was uh, it was a couple guys. Um, Oscar was one. I remember talking to Oscar about this as as things were starting to unfold and develop. Sean Farquhar and Steve Chesiday mm -hmm. were uh, were were big in in um, trying to push me into being more of who I was off stage into who I was on stage. You know, so even like with the Dove Act, even with the Dove Act, I you know I still kind of left some earrings in because I wanted to be semi cool. You know, but I would you know I would still kind of uh, you know kind of slick my hair back or kind of messy it up. You know, I kind of, I, I had, well, it was probably about when you saw me uh, initially, Luke, at the South Carolina convention. Man, um, wow. It was, you know, it was kind of that look yeah. that was still, you know, it was a little, I was letting little things trickle in, yep. but it wasn't as, you know, full out. It wasn't, wasn't full nine. And it yep. was um, like Farquhar uh, and, and, and Oscar and Chesede saying stuff you know, when we'd be hanging out after shows or before or backstage, you know, they would say like, well, why don't you, why don't you look like this? Why don't you dress like this when you're on stage? Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, because this is you, like, why don't you let more of who you are on stage and you should be looking like this. And, and I remember when Farquhar said that to me, I said, well, I mean, there's some other guys that are kind of doing it, you know? And at that point, you know, I wasn't aware of Chris in New York doing it, but I knew, of like, uh, you know, some other guys, uh, you know, that kind of had that look like, you know, Jonathan David Bass or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and I, you know, I just kind of was like, I don't know, I think, you know, it seemed like somebody claimed that already, you know, because magic is so weird like that. It, and magicians get so uh, unnecessarily worked up about like, you know, I used a red handkerchief, you, you can't <laughs> use a red handkerchief, you know? So with me, like that was, I, I, I was unfortunately raised wrong to a degree just by reading that stuff because unfortunately by that point, the Magic Cafe existed, oh boy. you know? And so I was, you know, reading stuff on the cafe, you know? And when I wasn't, uh, you know, intentionally stirring the pot, just trying to piss off people on there, I would read things. And and it, it uh, you know, that was something that I was, uh, I was incorrect in in assuming because I had misunderstood what I was reading or learning as I was trying to research, and I didn't have anybody to initially uh, necessarily tell me different. You know that you you can have a red handkerchief, like you can wear eyeshadow too. You know, like that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just just make it your own. You know, sort of like that saying: either do something, uh, was it do something either nobody else has done before. Or take something somebody has done before and do it better than anybody yeah. else. You know, uh, I'm not saying I wear eyeshadow and lipstick better than anybody else, but um, uh, you know, anybody that's seen my show and like Chris's show and Bass's show, uh, you know, or whatever, it, it you know, surface level, you know, if you might, if or Bass back in the day. Uh, but, you know, uh, at surface level, it, it might just look like, oh, here's just, you know, guys with eyeshadow, hmm. you know, uh, so they must be the same. But then once you, you know, once you see the material, it's it's completely different, you know, so if there is no um, there is no worry, you know, in, in that in, the, in that case, as far as I'm concerned, you know, yep. so um, so so it was kind of that, you know, letting letting the influence of and comfort of who I was off stage and what I was into uh, off stage, it, letting it trickle into who I was on stage. And uh, and it's still happening. It's still not like I just, you know, went with it and it was a one and done thing. It's still unfolding, you know, like with the with the virtual show I just did. I've uh, I, I spent a lot of time during this uh, pandemic without shows, you know, working on new material. And one of the things I've always wanted to work on was a zombie ball. Cool. You know, but and and, uh, and that was one thing I set to do in the pandemic. I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna work on something. What's what's a what's a bit that nobody like that nobody does anymore, and that people usually kind of shit on. You know, 
and like zombie ball. Like, but I remember seeing the Apostolic <laughs> Zombie, you know, I mean, back in the day, um, uh, Christopher Hart had an amazing zombie. You know, Norm Nielsen does a zombie. Like, come on now. Yeah. You know, Lance had a great zombie. Brett had a great zombie. You know, there zombie ball, you know, historically, there's been a lot of great zombie balls routines. So yeah. I started like researching, looking them all up. And so getting the, the moral of that story is zombie ball was something that I wanted to do. But again, things that I'm interested in, well, I'm, I'm fascinated by conspiracy theories and aliens and UFOs. And there's a story of these mysterious fear, spheres that, that appeared in Florida. And I had known of this story. So I created this whole routine. Like if I was going to do a zombie ball, what would it be? do it based off this story of these spheres that appeared in Florida. And supposedly I have one of them now and, you know, waka waka, but, uh, you know, and now, now here's the zombie. <laughs> so it's still happening. It's yeah. Still seeping things in that I'm interested in and just hoping the audience is cool to go along for the ride. You know, uh, someone wanted to know, uh, cause I'm lucky enough that I have, you know, spent some time with you, uh, even outside of your shows and stuff, but Mark wanted to know, um, how different are you off stage compared to the character you show on stage? Like when it comes to that separation, is there one, you know, uh, at the end of the day? Um, it depends. It depends on the social situation. Cause I, I'm pretty, uh, 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 anxious. I wouldn't say I have social anxiety disorder. I wouldn't say that much, but I, I get anxious in groups, um, if I don't know them, you know, if I, if I don't know a lot of people, I'm pretty, I'm, I, I'm pretty socially awkward. So it depends, it depends on the group, you know, of, uh, of people. And, uh, so if anything, I'd say it's, it's, a uh, it's an exaggeration, you know, because like I said, with the zombie ball thing, a lot, you know, and a lot of what I do in, in, in my show, uh, is based off of real stuff. Like when I tell the story of the, the razor blades, obviously I wasn't, the, I wasn't, you know, a five-year-old kid putting razor blades in the apples. But when I do razor blades, I talk about growing up in Minnesota and not getting to go trick-or-treating yep. because it was too cold out. That actually really happened. You know, like I remember being a little kid and having to give out candy to other kids that got to go because they were older kids. But I was too young, you know, to, to be able to go because there was actually a blizzard one year, you know, a pretty bad one that I recall. So, you know, so there there's truth in a lot of what I'm saying in my routines. Uh but some of it gets exaggerated sure. for, you know, like never, never let truth get in the way of a good story, you know? So yep. I kind of okay. uh, amplify it, I guess you could say. Uh, good question coming in from YouTube. Uh, Fort Master wants to know if you could only do one trick, the spookiest, he puts that, you know, to someone, what trick would you choose? So like the creepiest dance fairy trick you could do, which one do you think you would do if you could only do one? Man, you know, I don't know. That's um, that's a tough one. I don't know. Uh, I, I would say uh, in my voodoo routine, um, I stick, I don't stick the needles through my arms. I stick them through a spectator's arms. Yeah. And, and I would say, at least right now in, in I mean, because obviously I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that again. You know, given the way things are, yeah. but but that was uh, up until recently, that was one of the points in the show that I looked forward to the most. Okay. Because of that reaction, you know, when I removed it, because you've seen it, Luke. Yeah. Uh, you know, and stuff. But like when I remove the blindfolds, and and generally speaking, when I can get a good chick, you know, um, the moment when the blindfold comes off, and the audience doesn't see what's happening, they just see. You know, it looks like they just see it looks like this. Yeah. You know, they just see like this look here. But the 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 girl, I take the blindfold off and she sees the needles in her arms. So that's a great, true, real reaction for her mm -hmm. that uh, that I really look forward to. But I more so look forward to the audience because they usually sort of like nervously react because they're reacting to her reaction but they don't know exactly what she's looking at so generally they laugh along with her but it's it's it feels nervous mm -hmm. because they don't know what the hell is going on either and then it's not until i rotate her arms with the blindfold back arm and and the audience 
sees the needle tug, you know, in the skin, and then the girl feels it but doesn't see it, and becomes this whole chaotic uh, cloud of of laughter and shrieks and 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 everything, just noise. There's a lot of ladies making noise at this <laughs> point, and and that's I, I that would be if I had at this point uh, to answer your question, that would be just that section. Uh, I, I love performing just that section because those reactions are some of the most like real and raw and just aggressive, you know, sure. and it's, and it's, it's, and, and it can go any way, you, you know, it, 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 you never know. I I've done it thousands and thousands of times and, and still no two reactions or situations uh, or as these things unfold are ever the same. And, uh, and so I guess for me, that's why it's fun. You know, the audience, yeah, I get you know, it. is, is going to enjoy it. But that, I, I like the, the uncertainty and, and the build up. just knowing like, uh, it's, it's like, it's like giving someone a present. Uh, I've used this example before, and I think it's the best way to describe it. It's like giving someone a present for their birthday or for Christmas or whatever, you know, what's in it. And you, you, you know, you are excited uh, for them to open it. And it, cause you know, what's coming, you know, yeah. uh, they don't necessarily. And so I, it's kind of compared to like that. Like I know what's coming. They don't, but that build up of, of them suddenly maybe becoming uneasy or starting to do the math of, you know, one plus one is going to equal this. Well now wait a minute if that's what it equals. And then Holy shit, you know, there's the, there's the moment, you know, <laughs> uh, I like, I like magic that sort of builds like that, you know? Sure. Now, Something that you like to do. I'm now going to ask you about something that you don't seem to like doing. Um, that is these virtual shows. Why don't we touch on that loosely? I know it's yeah. something everyone's kind of stuck doing right now. Um, yeah. But I did notice on your socials that you mentioned that you may start doing some tours again soon, too. So why don't we touch a little bit on the virtual and how you're going to start to, you know, slide back into doing some live performances, too. So virtual stuff. What do you think? <laughs> yeah um i mean it's it's it, here here's what here's what you know i i don't know like i can only speak on how i've d done virtual shows right yeah. like uh what and and this is also like not if if in, in how i do it and in what i'm about to explain isn't like i'm not pointing or or, or suggesting because i don't know how anybody else does theirs right i've on i've all I've, on, I've also honestly never seen anybody else's virtual show mm -hmm. so i don't know but like the way i do it is like i treat it as it's a live show that just happens to be virtual it's kind of the mentality that that i had going into it and that i still have right so i have it's me and one other tech guy and um and so with that being said, we, you know, we try to do, uh, yeah, a live show or treat it as like a TV, uh, special almost, you know, and, and so, so we're inter splicing pre-recorded bits and, 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 and by pre-recorded bits, like we, we went into a studio with several cameras, did several takes, recorded these specific routines, um, because like, uh, you know, just like, like, cause if it's going to be almost like live to tape is sort of how I imagine these virtual shows in some of these cases, sure. certain routines that I know when performed live run the risk of things going wrong. Let's just use my dove act. For example, you know, um, I don't want, well, first of all, I don't want to have to do the dove act every goddamn virtual show, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's, that's something number one. Uh, but also number two, I wouldn't want like the dub act to have something go wrong in a virtual show, just like it can go wrong in a live show. But the thing about, you know, a, something going wrong in a live show, you have a lot more to work with to disguise things going wrong in that live environment. Your lighting guy can make adjustments. Um, you, you have a lot there. There's a, a lot broader of, of a, a visual field to work with. So for example, if I'm tossing a dove out in a live show, I'm usually, you know, and he comes back, that's usually, something else is usually happening, you know, as that's going on, yeah. you know, so, so their eyes, that's misdirection. Whereas like, if it's, you know, with a virtual show, if it's just a static camera, 
and the birds going to the camera and then coming back, their eyes are still, everything's still in the frame. Mm -hmm. So the risk of them seeing me do something else becomes greater, you know? So those moments we wanted to have these multiple camera things and edit it and put together a version of the Dove Act for virtual shows or my manipulation act or this zombie ball act, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, that are filmed and edited best as we can to get the best angles, to get as up close as we can get to some things and then come back. You know what I mean? So it's not just this static shot, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, it, and it's also because what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to become a motherfucking mentalist. <laughs> You know, that's what I did want to have with these virtual shows, right? So, I so with that in mind, I, I call it I call it lava lamp material. I wanted more lava lamp material as well, and lava lamp material is just cool shit to look at. Yeah. You know, that's what I consider lava lamp material. Um, so not necessarily all of it's live, um, because some of it is this you know stuff that is pre-recorded. Uh, so that also works twofold. So the pre-recorded material allows us time to preset something else. So the transitions are tighter, you know. Uh, so coming back from the live, uh, uh, sorry, coming back from the pre-recorded to the live, we're immediately ready to go into the next bit, cool. you know. Um, it's not so much like I'm digging around in a table all the time, you know, uh, as just this, again, static wide, you know, thing. Um so we just wanted to keep it moving really fast, you know. So uh, the interactive magic is 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 a lot less. And again, it just seems like mentalism yeah. is uh, is is just sort of the the easiest way to go. You know, I kind of clowned on it in my uh, in my ad campaign for one of my virtual shows, where like I just thought of everything I know everybody's doing. You know, that Woody Aragon, that but even in a live show, that Woody Aragon trick is awful. Like, why do magicians suck that trick's dick? It's so bad. <laughs> like, they put cards and tear and then throw it away and then put it back. And Jesus Christ, even Max Maven would get to the fucking square already by the time you know he's pulling some cards. Like, he would have got to the square. And, and of course, your, your corpse would be out, you know, looking for pills. Like, there you go. Like, it's just like, Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> like, Rubik's Cubes and all that shit, you know. Uh, and Dan, uh, Dan, hold on. I, I'm going to need you to tell me what you really think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's just like, holy shit, we're doing this. All right. Uh, so, like, you know, like, I, I didn't want to have anything like that, you know. Uh, I do, there, there is only one bit that I do in my virtual show and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that's like that. Uh, I forget the name of the guy that put it out now because I first discovered it, it seems like two months ago, but it was actually like back in, like in March when this shit happened. But uh, it's a virtual triumph that, um, that I think is really great and, and it's, it's short, you know, and the, the person uh, or the people you're performing for, uh, they, they don't need a full deck of cards, they just need four of a kind. And uh, of course it's math, but it doesn't feel like math. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're telling them to essentially do a triumph, you know, to, to the, it feels like the deck is mixed face up to face down. And, you know, and, and the reason for everything that we're doing along the way is seemingly justified. It's not like, you know, tear a card for no reason or, you know, think of a letter, now multiply that, you know, letter's place in the alphabet times 10 because there's 10 of us here in the Zoom. You know, at that point, it's like, why are we doing this? You know, what the hell? You know, so like, uh, so I didn't want to do any of that, but the virtual triumph is great. Um, uh, like that, that's the only like real interactive thing like that, that we do. A A Adrian LaCroix, thank you, Rich. Yeah, Adrian LaCro LaCroix, uh, that, sounds, that sounds right. Um, but, but everything else is like lava lamp like I was saying, lava lamp type stuff. I do like silk and egg, you know, <clears throat> but I do it with, uh, I do it with uh, scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I do this at Black Magic Wednesday when you saw it? Uh, this is, this is actually not sound familiar from what you've said okay. so far. I took it, I took it out for a bit because it was, uh, it's really gross. Um, <laughs> and, uh, cause it uses, um, so I, I, t I talk about, uh, you know, teaching them a trick. It's, it's silk to egg. But instead of silk, I say you use things you have around the house like this. And I have a takeout thing. And I say, you know, here we have a thing of scrambled eggs, you know. And I'm going to tuck these scrambled eggs into my fist. 
And, and I do it after the virtual triumph because I talk about like going back in time. If we were to go back in time, I just snap and the scrambled eggs have now gone back into a real egg. Oh, that's great. And then I go through, you know, the bit of it. And then I say, you know, here's what you need. You need the, ho you know, hollow egg. These aren't real scrambled eggs. It's cut up sponge, but it looks like egg from when you show this to your friends. It's the same, you know, same shit. Except then I say, but, you know, then blah, blah, blah. You peel the hole off and then you show the egg. And I say, just in case, if you go far enough back in time, you will, you know, find the answer to all of life's, you know, questions, including which came first, the chicken or the egg. And in this case, it was obviously the egg. And then I crack the egg and there's the real egg. So that's the payoff like silk to egg, but as the egg crunches open, it's one of those blue eggs that has a dead baby bird oh. in it. And this dead fetus just like slides out like aliens yeah, and just, you know, yeah, bloop yeah, into this, yeah. you know, <laughs> this glass, like a, like a <laughs> test tube baby, you know, but so, um, so that's how Dan Sperry does. I would have like, definitely like, remembered yeah. all of that, Dan. So for sure okay, I did yeah. not well, see they smell. it. <laughs> like they smell so bad, like that, like that, I, I, I like to think I don't have a weak stomach, but like doing that, like I, there's been a couple times where I'm like, oh, God damn it, you know, like stinks. And because uh, they're like supposed to be boiled or something, but I get them raw, you know, because I guess when when people uh, from the countries that do that, when they eat it, they just hard boil it. The, 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 the bird's dead in it, obviously, by the time you get it. Um, I mean, I think it is. I mean, it was when I cracked it. I don't know. See, this is, I don't know these things. Right. But like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's 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 an un it's an unboiled egg, so I guess technically raw, but it has the the, the yep. bird fetus in it. Yeah. And so so if I, you know by by prepping, you know we've all done silk and egg, you know how it is. If you leave the egg, you know if you just kind of let it chill for a while, sometimes they get a little gnarly, and these eggs get a little gnarly because it's got you know dead baby bird in it. But so like so I'm doing shit like that, and then I go into uh, from there. Then again with the time travel thing, I go into uh, the um, uh, Patrick Coon's. Um, what, what, what's his what's his thing called uh the time travel thing with your phone um oh god timeline timeline yeah so then i go into timeline yeah. so it's it's interactive uh but but it's it's lava lamp again you know uh, i i try and not do like any mentalism it's really you know just even even the timeline isn't necessarily considered mentalism because how can you predict you know uh and and did i just make it change with my mind i don't know you know but so like then then we go back in time for real uh, and stuff. Um, so, it, it, you know, in that way, I'm trying to make things flow, I guess is the point I was trying to make, trying to make things flow. But, uh, but yeah, it's just the delays are a pain in the ass. The, the reactions, you don't, you don't get those real, you know, uh, those real kind of reactions, you know, cause sometimes people are mute in themselves, um, sure. yeah. you know, uh, and, and, and all that, the delays, uh, you know, yeah. are, are rough sometimes. And, uh, and I think, you know, I don't, I don't I don't think and I certainly hope people don't get too comfortable uh, with this because I think there's there's something about experiencing m m magic. Well, it's it's meant to be done live. You know, it's meant to be done live. So what, what am I why am I even you know trying to find words? But, you know, it, it's to, to even just be able to pick a card and go, you know, you see it, you see it. OK. And it goes back in, you know, even with virtual, it seems, you know, now you just got to go. All right, name a card, you know, because even if you say I'm going to deal down, say stop with the delay, you know, it's like, no, no, I said, stop, <laughs> go back. It's yeah. like, geez, what? You know, uh, so uh, so it's it, it's I feel like it's it's also cause for um, a lot of. I don't want to say weaker magicians, but I know even I have been realizing I'm missing and forgetting lines hmm. that I used to say live because I can't say them through like a virtual show because they're meant to happen in that moment, you know, right. and, and because that moment is delayed and, and, and can be missed it, they don't hit the same, you know? So, um, the, the, the entertainment aspect and, and I certainly hope because there's some guys that that have I know have been killing it. I won't name names, but there's some guys I know that have been killing it with these virtual shows. But God, they're shit live magicians. Like they're awful, and this is probably only just gonna make them worse because they're not performing for real people. You know. Yeah. So when it comes time to go back out to perform for real people, they're they're probably gonna be worse. You know, or or they're not gonna know what the hell to do. Yeah. You know. True. Um, so 
I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not about this, you know, virtual thing. I think we're stuck with it for eternity. But I, I, I hope that it'll at least trickle away a bit. You know, well, I have noticed in some of your stuff floating around online, though, that you're starting to find ways to do live stuff again. So why don't you talk about how that's starting to happen, even if it's just a little bit at a time, because it is starting to happen. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, it's it is starting to to trickle back. I yeah. I first booked uh, uh, started rebooking I should say uh, a tour, and the first people were were, were the Germans. Got to look. Yeah, love let me Germans. ask you something. So, how how was it that you were so big in Germany of all places? What is it about that group of people that love Dan Sperry? What is the connection there? Well, it it, it happened initially when I did. Uh, it's called Das Super Talent, which is their version of got talent got right and and i and but i had i had taken german and studied german in school right so i knew how to speak some german my sister like majored or sorry minored in german okay. uh and stuff so like she spoke german my mom uh took it and studied it as well because she was she, she's uh has a uh, major as an english degree teacher whatever so like she had traveled so like uh, Germany and, and England mostly to which sounds weird. She's teaching English to the Brits, but whatever. Um, you know they they eat weird shit over there. So, who knows? Uh, but like uh, so like it it had been like oddly in my family. So when I had gotten the call to do uh, Super Talent, I was like, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll come do it. You know, love love the food. You know, that's when I used to drink beer. So I was like, love the beer, and. Uh, and and all that and so uh, so I went over there and I think it caught him off guard that I spoke German, and and also like the music and the look you know they're way into that like metal you know uh, and industrial type music so I had I have friends in bands that have uh, we kind of cross pollinate with our fan base sure. you know so so that helped a lot uh, I feel and um, and and also Germany you know even though like we had like David Blaine. And, you know, we had, you know, uh, Chris Angel and 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 uh, who else could be someone, you know, just more, I guess, you know, more we, we, we'd had as you know, in North America, we'd had a, a more alternative, for lack of a better word, you know, type magicians uh, that were uh, out there, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. you know, and Germany didn't really have that, you know, they have the Ehrlich brothers. And if, if anybody has seen the Ehrlich brothers, you know. We are in no way competition for each other whatsoever, you know. Um, and so, uh, so that helped. They didn't. They just didn't really have uh, something like that. I just, you know, when when they talk about sometimes it's about timing. It was, I think, just about timing cool. in in that aspect. I just showed up at the right time. So, um, and I've been going back uh, ever since, you know. And uh, and so we we uh, set up a uh, my next tour, which at that time was my only live shows, which you know, of course wasn't until 2021. It's not until the end of November, but, uh, but they were the first ones to start booking and wanting to put together, you know, a tour again and, and get me over there. So, so we we're, we're booking that out, which is great. We've already, uh, we've already got five shows confirmed, you know, so we're, it's, it's slow. It's going to be slow, you know, as everybody knows, but we we're, 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 we're getting there. And then just this last week, when Florida, of course, Florida, a bunch of weirdos, they, 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 you know, they're coming back again. And, uh, and, and, uh, one of the clubs, uh, that I work in Florida, I, I work a lot of nightclubs in, in Florida cause they have a, uh, a big history in like metal music. So they have a lot of old like metal clubs and, and a lot of bands tour through a lot of venues in Florida. And I kind of go through the same route and, uh, and, and one of these, you know, club, uh, theater places actually hit me up. Uh, cause I usually do a tour through Florida once a year uh, and and start at the top and work my way down. And uh, and all of them, of course, you know, cancel or indefinitely postponed kind of thing. And this place uh, called me up and we're like, hey, should, you want to you want to try and do this thing? You know, we're going to open it up, you know, to have it live, obviously with guidelines in mind, you know, but um, but you want to come and do your show and we'll also, you know, stream it because that's what they've been talking about doing is doing both ticketed and streaming at the same time. Cool. And, and I, I just said, like, even though I don't have any of these other, you know, venues to, to, to sort of fund, you know, the, the road, I was just like, I don't care. Like, I'm just going to go, let's just, let's do it. Like get to perform live again. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You have me at hello. Like I'm down. Let's go. How do we do this? You know? So, 
so with that, yeah, things things are are are, are starting cool. up. You know? Very good. Well, um, yeah. I know I've, I've gone over the time that I told you we were going to go, but I did want to ask you, uh, do you have any future virtual shows coming up that if people wanted to tune in and watch, uh, do you have any dates that people could maybe look into and maybe grab some tickets? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't plan on doing uh, my virtual show ev uh, ever again, uh, really. Um, the ticketed one that I did, but the, this one, uh, it's if you, uh, if you go on Bands in Town, if people follow me on Bands in Town or just go to dansperry.com, on, on, on sale right now under my dates is this one for the Boca Black Box is what it's called. It's in Boca Raton, Florida. That is the one that's live and going to be streamed. So they can buy virtual tickets to see that show through the venue. Cool. All right. So yeah. Dansperry.com. Easy to remember. That's the one. Very easy to remember there. All right. Cool. Well, yeah. uh, any, any last words from you, you know, about what, what Magic's going through right now or anything like that? Like, I know you have a lot to say about everything but um any last thoughts before i let you get out of here because i know you got a busy day ahead of you uh no not 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 that i can think of i mean i don't know magicians we usually like hate each other for the most part you know we annoy the living shit out of each other already and and i mean i'm not you know i'm not gonna get into too much you know uh specifically but there there's there's been a lot of without getting it there's just been a lot of you know people are just too easy now too easy uh to 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 to, to get set off by meaningless stupid shit that doesn't matter you know um it, you know as, as far as far as i'm concerned like i've never made a post that said like you know hey if you if you believe this then then you might as well delete yourself off my off my page blah 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 you know any of that garbage, like to me, that's just garbage. That's stupid. And whether you do it on your personal page or not, like it's still on the internet. It's still going to get out there. I know it makes me, no matter what it's about, you know, and it's mostly about what we know is going on right now. But like if that, that kind of behavior, you know, is just something that makes me not want to work alongside. I mean, I probably don't want to work next to these people yeah. anyways, you know, but it definitely makes me go like you know we're supposed to you know I, I get how difficult it can be to not to not have a platform to get your your and, and god knows i've been i've been guilty of it in the past i've made stupid videos you know or stuff you know i've been guilty of it but it just seems now more than ever magic should be super popular you know as as an outlet for people to have an escape and and have a get get to experience something cool and, and magical right and and if and if as magicians we're just getting too petty, you know, like jumping on each other's pages, spreading, you know, rumors that aren't true, or even even if they are, like it's not your business to be spreading, you know, if someone's got a drug problem or a what, yeah, like some of this stuff is just getting way too petty, and and it's not becoming of of uh, of of our field of entertainment in my opinion I, I i'd like to think that we were uh for the most part better than that it, it puts a bad taste in my mouth yeah uh you know even even worse so for for what it's worth that's the only thing i can say about the state of magic just everybody just chill the fuck out keep your own side of the street clean and uh and you know let's just let's just have a good time and, and get along and and uh and share magic you know exactly. instead of instead of a uh, bunch of negativity and crybaby behavior, you know? Well said. Yeah. I mean, it's out there and just because people have a voice doesn't mean they should always use it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say this. It is a good thing though, that, that they took that stupid fucking Jabrizi trick off the internet. Like in what fucking universe is, is reaching in pockets a good thing, you know? And that, that creepy pedo photo that they used of Jabrizi too, pulling the pulling the cards out of her back pocket, and he's almost like giving thumbs up, you know, like yeah, you got damn right. Look at what I'm doing, you know. And she's like, "What's happening?" You know, like, oh, just that photo. Alone. Like, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Like, what the hell are we doing? You know, that I almost made another video off that alone, but I had to talk myself off. I the saw it. It was that. very questionable behavior from everyone involved. Um, in that yeah. scene so yeah like yeah. what the hell are we doing we've had over six months of a quarantine this is the best trick that you can put out right now yeah. are you serious yeah. like boy like that like just that kind of stuff like i get it you know people are trying to make money in any way possible but 
go drive Uber Eats or something. You know, I, I've done it when we, you know, cause we've had to, you know, yep. it's just, it's a weird time, but don't put out, you know, shit tricks like that, that are, you know, and of course in, in, in a time when we need six feet apart from each other, you're going to put out basically the most, you know, personal space invasive fucking magic trick ever. What is wrong with you guys? Why not? Like, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah. Where's the third card? You gotta, you gotta find it by taking, sticking your tongue down her throat or up her ass. Like, what the fuck, guys? Jesus. <laughs> and you would think that the 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 shock type stuff would be coming from the shock illusionist, but you know, even Dan is tame on his videos and stuff. I got standards. Even I got standards. Yeah. I'll put a dude's finger in my mouth, but you know, you don't, you don't, you know, you don't. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't, you don't do that to it. You don't do that to a chick. Yeah. You know. uh, that was no bueno. I agree with that a hundred percent. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think the bonus content was his handling of the Brazier trick. If I'm not mistaken, that was the bonus. <laughs> 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> 20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh I'm man. Bored. Oh God. Yeah. Let's, I mean, I think the truth is, and the reality is from that, we can only go up. We can only go up from all that. So. This is true. Cool. All right, brother. Well, I'm going to let you get out of here. Uh, before I do, I, I always do this so uh, people can check out your website, socials, and all that. I know you mentioned your website before, but if people want to keep up with you there or on social media, wherever you are, where can they find you? Yeah, it's just uh, Instagram is just at Dan Sperry. Uh, the YouTube is Dan Sperry Official. Facebook is Dan Sperry Official. Cool. And are you doing weekly live streams? Are you continuing to do them or are you kind of doing them now when you feel like it? Because I know you were doing weekly shows too. I went, yeah i was i was doing them um i'm i'm, I'm gonna take a, a, a break from them until after the the halloween season because oh. there's some some side projects that I, i'm involved with that are taking more more time you know sure, than, I get it. than anticipated and uh yeah okay yeah because so. dan does a lot of live streaming guys so make sure to uh keep up with him online he's doing a lot of fun stuff and uh I'm sure you'll see more. So thanks so much for your time, Dan. I really do appreciate it. And not, not only that, but your honesty. And, you know, I think sometimes we hide behind trying to be politically correct about even things in the magic world. So to have a, tr a totally raw perspective is very refreshing. So thanks for bringing that to the table too, man. It's definitely. Uh, yeah, no problem. I like to think, I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I would, it, it, I, I don't like to hide behind my my keyboard, <laughs> you know. Like I, I'll, I'll just it, it is what it is, you know. I'll say it to you in person. True that. Same, same shit. You know. Well, we've had a lot of people saying this is one of their favorites because of that, so we all appreciate it very, very much. So. Uh, oh yeah, thank, thanks for having me. You got it, brother. I'll let you get out of here. And uh, thanks for having this uh, this channel too. You know, with the all things magic stuff, that's been a big, at least for me. I'm just saying that's been a a big, you know, refreshing uh, uh, group, I guess, nice. or, or page to have. Uh, online is something different, even though it's obviously it's your sandbox. It seems to almost sort of police itself, yeah. which is which is cool. And, and, and not to name other you know uh, pages or groups that 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 I've come across and stuff, but sometimes there can be a little you know uh, you know I don't know what the word is, but you know what I'm saying. It can, it can get a little messy, oh, yeah. or whatever. People can get a little Steve Brooks about it. And, uh, <laughs> and well so, said. So, uh, you, you know, uh, yeah. you, you've got a, a, a great page with all things magic. So uh, thanks, thanks for creating that and uh, and being sort of our uh, our gatekeeper for it. Absolutely, dude. Well, I'm glad you're part of it. And uh, I'm glad you guys were here, too. And before I let you all go, if you haven't read it below, um, every interview I do is also up on our podcast. So the details are below. Uh, check that out. You can listen on the go. So if you can't watch each interview every week, um, I get them up there and you guys can uh, listen to those on the go on your favorite podcast platform. So there you go. All right. So for me and Dan Sperry, we're going to get out of here. You guys take care of yourselves and each other, and we will catch you all next time. See you guys.